spectral domain and swept source. I will go one by one. In time domain OCT, the technically uh, in order to measure the light intensity and echo delay time, the light from the broadband source is split with the beam splitter into two different parts. That is the main structural uh, structural uh, parameter in case of time domain OCT. And it has a sample one and a reference sum that is dual value. And in case of time domain OCT system, it can require a maximum of 400A scans per second. And axial resolution is 10 to 15 micrometer. Here in the picture, you can see one time domain optical coherence tomogram. Here's the reference arm, here's the sample arm, and we get the image, and there is processing, and, uh, and we get the high resolution images. The newer version is a spectral domain OCT. Actually, we are now what we wait in day to day life, what prints we are getting, that is through the spectral domain OCT. This is also known as a specially encoded. Frequency domain OCT. It uh, do not require a moving reference arm, and its as uh, its uh, capacity of a scan per second is eighteen thousand to seventeen thousand, and the resolution is five micrometer. Uh, it gives more precise, high resolution and uh, uh, cross sectional image of the retina. Another method that is swift source OCT is a newer method. Uh, it is also known as the time encoded frequency domain OCT, and it can give one lakh. Uh, or 1 million a scans per second with a resolution of 5 to 10 micrometer. And in the picture, we can see the time domain OCT along the spectrometer based and sweep based. The spectrometer based and sweep source based OCTs uh, are combined in known as Fourier domain OCT. A few words uh, uh, comparing the history of OCT machines. Here is the generations. And here is the picture of OCT machines. And here is another picture having the generations, first generation, second generation, and third generation of optical coherence tomograph here. To mention, the, in the third generation, the resolution is more precise, more cross-sectional, and it gives a three-dimensional image. So what are the OCT scans for uh, detecting a glaucoma? What are the parameters that we will look for in case of uh, OCT of glaucoma. That is number one, RNFL measurement. The RF and RNFL, that is retinal half fiber layer measurement, obtained with the OCT are able to differentiate glucometers from normal subjects with good sensitivity and specificity. Optic nerve head analysis, that is another one parameter. It can measure two optic nerve head parameters, the rim area and horizontal interpreted ring white with cup expression. Another one, that is number three, that is macular thickness measurement. The mean macular thickness of glucometer's eyes has been shown to be significantly lower than that of normal control eyes. That is the main uh, information to get uh, the diagnosis of glaucoma in case of macular thickness. A significant correlation between optical coherence tomograph macular thickness and visual field mean defect in glucometer size has been demonstrated in this uh, macular thickness measurement stages. And the protocols? They are the protocols, RFN and protocol, that is three. The optic nerve head protocols and the macular thickness protocols. So uh, we are actually uh, <coughs> having, uh, or we will assess the retinal nerve fiber layer. The retinal nerve fiber layer defects is the earliest signs of glaucoma, and in some studies, it is said that 88 percent of ocular hypertensives who converted to glaucoma has retinal nerve fiber layer defects along with visual field defects. 60 percent of these converted had retinal nerve fiber layer defects six years prior to the visual field defects. And another study says that RNFL changes are detected more frequently than optic nerve head changes in eyes converted from ocular hypertension to glaucoma. So the assessment is actually subjective method and we will get a high resolution monochromatic image of the retinal nerve fiber layer. Diffuse retinal nerve fiber layer loss difficult to detect and uh, the uh, we need a clear media and dilated people with skilled photographer. And this retinal nerve fiber layer assessment is having the sensitivity of a specificity of 70 to 80 percent. Here's the uh, measurements of average nerve fiber layer thickness. In a normal, it is 95.9 plus minus 11.4. And in early glaucoma, it is 80.3 plus minus 18.4. And in a case of advanced glaucoma, the thickness is 50.7 plus minus 13.6. There is a 
picture showing the structural damages actually follows the functional damage. So uh, we will go through an interpretation of imaging data that is available in our NIO. Uh, <clears throat> it is uh, said that, uh, or it can be uh, said that there is lots of in, uh, in, uh, lots of interpretations in different uh, methods like Chase, like uh, Heidelberg. But we will uh, take the uh, we will discuss about the NIDIC RS three thousand scan, and uh, there is some segmentation, and I will go through the interpretation of this imaging. At first, uh, the uh, demographic data here you will see in the picture the demographic data. So what, what we will uh, get from the demographic data, we will get the patient data, the name of the patient, age, the date of birth, and other parameters of the patient, the scan date, uh, the ID of the patient, and the scan time. Here in the picture, we can uh, see uh, the uh, and uh, the uh, demographic data containing uh, the name uh, in date of birth date and other parameters here to mention we will get one uh, in the image we can see the section is 4.8 millimeter and 4.8 millimeter and there is one another thing mentioned 512 and 120 so what is this this is actually we will get optic nerve head uh, disc map uh, that is centered in the optic nerve head and we will get uh, one 4.8 millimeter and 4.8 millimeter circle and from there we will get the uh, data we will scan and this 512 and 128 actually reflects the 128 horizontal scans on this 4.8 millimeter square. And we will having in each segment the 512 bases. That means, that means uh, within uh, uh, 10 seconds or something, uh, we will get more than 65,000 image in this data. And uh, here another thing is mentioned, and we will find that if there is uh, this scan is actually reliable or not that we can get from the signal strength here we can see the signal strength 8 by 10 and 9 by 10 uh, we will uh, we will consider this this is uh, reliable because below uh, 6 is actually uh, non reliable so above uh, 6 we can take it as a uh, signal strength we can take it as a uh, reliable scan next we will think about the neuro retinal ring thickness graph uh, what we will uh, go through in this individual uh, TSNIT curve for each eye presented in comparison with HMS normative, normative database. Here, uh, black line reflects the patient data and the color band is actually age-based normative data. In this color band, we will find green band, that is 95% normal, yellow band, 5% normal, and red band, that is 1% normal, considering the uh, age-based normative data. And the scan sequence is uh, Temporal, superior, nasal, and inferior cortex. Normally, we will find one double hump later. I will discuss it later on. Here in the picture, we can see <coughs> I, I, I got three images uh, and profit for uh, discussion. Uh, the first image we will get here. Uh, in the image, we will find this data here in the black line and another this one. So, in two eyes, in the right eye and in left eye, this data line is actually represented in. Uh, two different colors. Here we can see one is in blue and one is in red. Again in blue, again in red. So uh, this differentiates two different eyes. So uh, what is this? Uh, this is actually the uh, neuroretinal rim thickness depth. We will get it and the, we will uh, here the measurements are here. After that, we will get another scan of this. This is this this is the actual the neuroretinal uh, thickness graph presented in pseudo color. And another, again, we will find one another uh, map that is thickness map. And here uh, we will get some warm color and cooler color. Warm color indicates the thickness is less, and cooler color indicates the thickness is more. That is the good thickness. This is uh, this is the picture uh, of uh, neuroretinal thickness graph. The next one to discuss is RNFL TSNIG graph. That is, we uh, go uh, through the, uh, uh, these steps, and there will be an overlap of these graphs, comparing of two eyes. And we will think, we will search for the symmetry or asymmetry, and if we find that there is cross asymmetry, we can call it, this is a uh, printout of glaucoma. So here, another, again, I will get the three pictures uh, for three different patients. These two lines, one, uh, above the other, one above the other, here in the graph we can see 
this is uh, the neuroretinal thickness graph right and left right imposed in only one picture so we will get the symmetry here in the first picture uh, we uh, we are uh, we are having one patient with symmetry of 89% again we are having the symmetry of 64% and having the uh, symmetry of 0% here to mention on the very right side of the uh, symmetrical graph uh, here we can see the both uh, right and left eye curves is in in below the range of red red line so uh, considering this situation uh, the the green line the the green portion the yellow portion and red portion we can see this is in the outside normal so the green is the, within the normal limit the yellow is in the border line and the red is in the outside the normal limit and here to mention we get this earlier in the inferior and then the superior quadrants as because the inferior and superior quadrants are the uh, are the first we take in the glucometers image now uh, the next steps in this uh, uh, interpretation of rfnl analysis that is rfnl quadrant and clockwise distribution of data this is a circular diagram showing showing quadrant uh, quadrant wise and clockwise distribution of both eyes of the patient and the color code remains same and this is usually useful in quadrant wise distribution here the same three patients we will see the whole data the data in uh, upper and superior inferior quadrant the four quadrant and clockwise distribution these color coders are same as before and it is uh, again to mention this has been reflected by the comparison of age based normal density data now the optic nerve parameters the data table actually reflects the various ratios quadrant average and asymmetry between two eyes and rfl mm average thickness uh, along the entire circular scan that is calculated by inbuilt rfl thickness analysis and these uh, are showed in the, with the uh, values here uh, we will get the optic nerve parameters the cd ratio the horizontal and vertical ratios the beam and peaks measurements and different measurements and peaks area what is the millimeter square and the cap area from here we can uh, get the data and we can also give one clinical correlation from the uh, from the optic uh, of optical coherence tomography data with what we are uh, getting in the, uh, uh, the clinical findings and we will uh, what we are getting in the visual field analysis another uh, thing to uh, measure in the uh, case of uh, glaucoma is uh, ganglion cell layer thickness here in uh, <coughs> nio uh, this is uh, uh, this is also available in nio uh, this is an heidelberg technology and uh, this is called the, uh, the machine is called the spectralist we will get this uh, done this is available in nio and we will get the average thickness there comparing to the other uh, this one is actually getting the, uh, getting as the, uh, the results of retinal nerve layer and optic nerve parameters and along with the ganglion cell lipids so what are the advantages Uh, of optic, uh, optical coherence tomograph to others. It, it can diagnose and follow up pre-parametric glaucoma. It can confirm whether the visual field defect is real or an, that is an artifact. And it can differentiate normal from the glucometer size with an early stages and age-based normal density data can be uh, given and, uh, and serial changes can be analyzed. And the disadvantages of OCT is uh, this is expensive. and impairs performance in an undilated pupil and when there is media opacity is there and cannot do in patients with poor fixation and another uh, disadvantage uh, uh, that is actually in advanced cases of the glaucoma or in advanced stages of the glaucoma uh, this is uh, the OCT parameters are actually uh, not reliable better to rely on uh, visual field analysis so what are the artifacts the artifacts we can get uh, in case of uh, OCT is actually uh, in, uh, so what is actually artifacts this artifacts is uh, uh, getting some uh, uh, abnormal uh, data uh, from the scan uh, the cause may be due to the peak poor image quality the segmentation problems or uh, media opacity uh, in case of poor image quality uh, we can think about that the, uh, the, the dry eyes ocular surface problems or a poor concentration poor centration of the uh, uh, instrument or old instrument is there Yeah, in the segmentation error, that is the slicing error, uh, that may be due to high myopia. The cause may be due to high myopia. The tilted peaks, the segmentation error, may be there. and the media opacity is due to maybe vitreous hemorrhage, cataract, or any other abnormalities. Now the uh, 
Uh, another uh, uh, thing to uh, apply or discuss that is enter segment OCD. I will uh, take only one or two minutes there. Enter segment OCD is uh, it was also applicable in in case of glaucoma. We studied the normal anatomy and physiology for a screen the spectrum of angle closure glaucoma and we studied the Aquarius syndrome. So we study mechanism of malignant glaucoma and to test the efficacy of laser peripheral iridotomy and to test the patency of glaucoma drainage device in case of enter OCD. Here are the picture of enter segment OCD. Here uh, we can see an open angle and angle closer. Uh, again, the same uh, picture in open angle and angle closer. So the last slide actually, the, what is the futures of this OCT? Uh, the newest uh, era is actually swept source OCT technique that can give more acquisition speed, volume and depth. And uh, there is another application supportable on OCTs in the neonatal ophthalmology cure uh, that is uh, in the pipeline of uh, OCT. And another is OCT angiograph that can also uh, representation in this protocol. Thank you, everyone. Thank you for the patience here. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Assalamu alaikum, sir. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you, Dr. Mahmoud. Uh, I would like to request the moderator, Dr. Mahmoud, uh, for conducting the next portion session. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you very much for your nice presentation. He has explained extremely beautiful and uh, the, uh, he understood it and uh, explained it uh, nicely. Now the session is open for the question and answering session, starting from the students. Assalamu alaikum, I'm Dr. Tanzi my question to the presenter is how to differentiate between time domain and spectral domain of the Assalamu alaikum. Uh, thank you for the question. The time domain and spectral domain of the Yes, Hello. Am I audible? Yes, you are audible. Sir, 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 thank you, sir. Uh, the time domain and spectral domain OCT as they are actually the two varieties of optical coherence tomogram. The time domain is uh, a, a bit older varieties, and the spectral domain or uh, the uh, is the newer variety. So to differentiate uh, between these two, one thing is that in case of time domain, we use one monochromatic light, and in case of spectral domain, the broadband light is used. In case of uh, Time domain OCTs, their generation is a bit older, and here uh, the air scan is generally uh, moving. Uh, the, uh, we, uh, in structural changes, there is one reference mirror, and one is uh, the uh, one is the eye. But in case of uh, spectral domain, the reference mirror is fixed, and uh, in case of uh, time domain, the reference mirror is actually moving. So, uh, what is the, uh, next things to mention? In case of uh, time domain OCT, we can uh, we, we we get actually 400 a scans per second. Uh, that is uh, the, 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 uh, the speed is less. In case of a spectral domain, we can go from 18,000 up to 75,000 scans per second. So the uh, the domain is more 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 precise. Uh, the uh, time domain OCTs are actually two dimensional, and uh, the spectral domains are uh, three dimensional images. And if we think about the sections. Uh, in case of time domain, uh, we get the section of 10 microns. And in case of uh, spectral domain, the section is more precise, that is 5 micrometer. And uh, uh, the uh, time domain system is actually slower to acquisition and we get the result a bit slower. And in case of uh, spectral domain, we will get the result more faster and uh, we will get a high resolution image of the uh, process. Thank you. I'm Dr. Fahana Fini, Pepsi Peace Party student. Thank you, President, for your very nice and elaborate presentation. Uh, my question is uh, the, the use of OCT in glaucoma is one of the use is uh, assessment of the anterior segment. I want to know what is the difference between anterior segment OCT and UVM. Okay, uh, thank you for the question. Uh, in case of uh, anterior segment OCT, and UVM. Uh, anterior segment OCT is uh, is actually 
uh, address segment OCD is a varieties of OCD, and here uh, we actually use the uh, opt uh, the optical uh, parameters. That is, uh, in OCD, we use the light as a source of uh, as a source of uh, acquisition, and in case of UDM, we use actually the acoustic or uh, the uh, uh, the sound waves, uh, or uh, and yeah, in, in, if we consider our entry segment OCD, this is actually a non-contact uh, imaging system, and UVM is uh, needed one contact, and it requires a coupling fluid to get the uh, actual image with the uh, <coughs> with the patient and the and the um, for getting the image. And uh, in entry segment OCD, the skilled person. Uh, we need a skilled person, but the but the skilled person is not so much reliable. But in case of UVM, we need one skilled person and uh, that knows how to do this uh, the measurements. Uh, in case of uh, anterior segment OCT, we get one high resolution image of the anterior segment or anterior portions. But in case of UVM, we get some lower axial uh, resolution of images. And uh, uh, in uh, uh, in case of anterior segment OCC, uh, OCT, there is uh, a limited ability to visualize just posterior to the iris uh, cells. But in case of UVM, we can get it. Another thing is that uh, if the media is op opaque, means the cornea is opaque, uh, we cannot get good images in case of anterior segment OCT. But in case of UVM, we, if the even the media is opaque, we can get some uh, good quality image. And if uh, you can contribute anything, any more points. Uh, yes, uh, you are right. Uh, in case of uh, UVM, we actually get uh, up to the four millimeter of uh, image of the anterior segment. But in case of uh, anterior segment OCT, we can uh, see also the uh, um, uh, another parameter like uh, lens uh, vault also and the posterior lens capsule. But it is a limitation that we cannot see the structure behind the uh, Irish pigment uh, layer. And in case of uh, UVM, as the patient is in uh, supine position. So there is some uh, false uh, uh, dimension out of the anterior state. The patient is in supine position. But in case of anterior segment, to shift anterior chamber tip. And other is okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. As Assalamu alaikum, sir. Uh, myself, uh, Dr. Shamal. I have a uh, question to presenter. Uh, what are the factors affecting OCT? Okay, uh, <clears throat> thank you for the question. Uh, what, uh, the factors actually affecting the OCTs, uh, that means the OCT interpretation or the OCT scan is uh, the uh, uh, the artifacts or we can say uh, the uh, problems uh, that is uh, poor image quality may be there. Uh, then uh, there may be uh, media opacities and other errors. Uh, to, uh, 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 to describe the things, uh, say we, we have the poor image quality. That can be due to uh, some uh, dry eye or ocular surface related issues is there. If there, if there is poor centration or poor uh, concentration uh, while taking the uh, OCT pictures, then that also can affect. If there is uh, the instrument is old and the, uh, the uh, operator is inexperienced, then uh, that, that also affects the OCT printing. Uh, and uh, some other thing is the motion is there. If uh, the movement is there while taking the pictures, that can also affect the image quality of the uh, OCT. Another thing is that uh, the, um, uh, the, um, the media opacities. The media opacities, can, uh, we can think about the cataracts that gives a, usually a poor image quality. Uh, and other things may be the vitreous hemorrhage, steroid hyalosis, or any other pathology in the posterior segment that can uh, interfere with the taking the images. And uh, if there is other uh, things, uh, you can add. Uh, the, there are some additional factors uh, which can uh, affect the performance of OCT, like age of the patient, then shifting of uh, harm or the splitting of the harm. Uh, this. Uh, the factors who is are responsible for uh, affecting the performance of OCT. Thank you so much. Thank you, presenter, for your nice presentation. My question is, what are the significance of uh, OCT retinal not and what is flow reflection? Okay. Uh, thank you, 
two further question. Uh, in case of retinal nerve fiber layer thickness or RFNL thickness analysis, we will get the uh, uh, we will get some parameters. Uh, we will get some uh, uh, markings that is actually uh, pre uh, pre perimetric. Uh, we can say that is uh, uh, while we get the this function uh, while we get the uh, functional uh, field loss before that we get the uh, changes in the RFNL thickness. So to diagnose a case of glaucoma or progression of glaucoma, we can get this in measurement of RFNL thickness. And to mention the flow effect, the flow effect is actually uh, in the advanced cases of the glaucoma, when their thickness is very less, uh, say uh, the below uh, uh, 40 micrometer, below 40 micrometer or 30 micrometers in some uh, instances, we will uh, not get the RFL thickness uh, uh, or uh, the thickness cannot be measured a, in correlation to the visual fields. So uh, yeah, this is actually getting the full flow effect because there is uh, RFL thickness is less, but not less because of there is presence of gliosis and glial tissue is there. Uh, this uh, known as flow effect. Thank you. Thank you, Mahmoud. Uh, is there any investigation by which uh, we can overcome floor effect? To overcome floor effect, uh, actually, uh, we need to. Uh, this actually happens in advanced case of glaucoma. So, uh, if we think that uh, the OCTs in advanced cases of glaucoma uh, is not reliable, uh, oh. then uh, we can think about the visual field changes. We can uh, think about the visual field changes to get the actual parameters. Uh, but uh, to re reduce the flow effect, uh, I do not have any idea whether we have any other options or not. We can do OCT macula. Okay, thank you. <coughs> no, actually, uh, hello, Sashwana Chaki. Sashwana Chaki, sir. Actually, OCT macula that I have told you, that macula amra usually early diagnosis is generally used for the flow effect of the OCT macula total. Jodi amra field effect age dorte chai na fiber layer dekhbo na fiber er jodi age diagnosis korte chai tale amra paramecular ganglionic cell complex seta diagnosis korar jonno chesta kori pore effect er flow effect er effect dekhar jonno macula dekha korte okay next question okay next question Sir. Uh, go, sir. Sir, uh, thank you, presenter, for your nice question and a nice presentation. I'm Dr. Vikash Sundarpal, MSPSB resident. I have a question to you. Uh, you have mentioned about the quadrant map. Uh, which quadrant is more important and why? Thank you for the question. Uh, in quadrant map, uh, in quadrantary map, the most important is inferior than superior. Uh, the changes first we will get in the inferior quadrant and then we can get the superior quadrant. As per the structural and ISNT rule, more uh, fibers are getting through the inferior and the superior quadrants. For this, the uh, in case of quadrant map, if we, if we consider uh, the inferior and superior quadrant, mm -hmm. that, that will give us the uh, uh, early uh, diagnosis of the glucose. So I I, uh, I think that the inferior and the, then the superior is important in case of quadrant map. Yes, you, you are right. For uh, early diagnosis, inferior first than superior. This quadrant is very important. As inferior because we know that during the uh, glaucoma changes, uh, when we assessment the digs, inferior they first affected. So in OCT we have to see the inferior quadrant. Thanks. Dr. Palash, is there any time for question? Dr. Munir? Sir, now, sir, you ask what is the question? Munir, you can ask the question. Yes, sir. Parachi, sir. Yes, 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 sir. Doctor, uh, 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 hello. Sir, sir, I am. Is it the number one? Student, doctor, student, doctor, young, young boy. 
नोमिटर मेनलिटिन डिटेक्ट कर इंडिकेटर
তারপর গ্রুপ জিডি এক্সপিসিসি এবং ওসিটি এগুলো আমাদের আলাপ আলোচনা হয়েছে আমাদের মোস্ট প্রিসাইজলি যদি আমাদের ডিটেক্ট করতে হয় সেটা হবে রেটিনাল নার্ভ পাবল লেয়ার থিকনেস ম্যাপ টু ইম্পর্টেন্ট এটা কিন্তু 89% সেনসিটিভিটি এবং 98% প্রিসিসিটি টেস্ট এটা এটা মোস্ট হচ্ছে আমরা কোন কন্টেন্টটা দেখি এটা আমাদের আলাপ আলোচনা হয়েছে যে ইনফিরিয়র প্রোডাক্ট ইজ মোস্ট ভাইটাল টু ডিটেক্ট ওসিটি ওসিটি অপটিক নার্ভ হেড টু ডিটেক্ট গ্লুকোমা ম্যাকুলার রিজনটা কিন্তু আর্লি ডিটেক্টের ক্ষেত্রে ম্যাকুলার যে ম্যাকুলার প্রটোকল অফ ওসিটি এটা কিন্তু মোস্টলি ইম্পর্টেন্ট কারণ হচ্ছে 50% গ্রানুলেশন পেরি ম্যাকুলার রিজনে থাকে এটা যদি কোনো মানে থিকনেসটা যত কমে যাবে তখন কিন্তু আর্লি স্টেজে আমরা এটা গ্লুকোমা ডায়াগনোসিস করতে পারবো রেটিনাল নার্ভ ফাইবার লেয়ার অপটিক নার্ভ হেড এবং ম্যাকুলার অ্যানালাইসিস এটা হলো আমরা রেটিনাল নার্ভ ফাইবার লেয়ারটা কত থেকে দেখি 3.4 মিমি রাউন্ড দা অপটিক ডিস্ক অপটিক নার্ভ হেড এর ক্ষেত্রে আমরা 6টা ফোর 6টা লাইন আমরা কোয়াড্রেন্টে রেডিয়ালি একটা লাইন স্ক্যান করি অ্যারাউন্ড দা অপটিক ডিস্ক আর ম্যাকুলার অ্যানালাইসিস করে হলো 6টা লাইন করতে হবে রেডিয়াল প্যাটারনে এবং সেন্টার অফ দা ফোবিয়া এটা হলো ওসিটি অফ দা অপটিক নার্ভ হেড
प्रथम कथा
অন্যরাও বলবে থ্যাংক ইউ ভেরি মাচ এটা মনে রাখতে হবে যে মায়োপিয়া আমরা পরীক্ষার সময় জিজ্ঞাস করি যে
ইন্টারনাল লিমিটিং মেমব্রেন যেখানে শেষ হয়ে গেছে সেটা গেছে ইনার বর্ডার হিসেবে দেখে যার ফলে অ্যানাটমিক্যাল পজিশনিং সিস্টেমে ওসিটি একভাবে তার কমপ্লেক্স রেশিও ডিফাই করে আর আমরা ক্লিনিক্যালি যখন দেখি নেগেটাই তখন আমরা অন্যভাবে দেখি এই যে দেখার যে আলাদা আলোচনা <laughs>